Nature is here at COP26 to find answers to the climate science questions you've been asking. Many of you have asked, quite simply, is it too late? We pitched this question to scientists across the conference, and they seem to fall into two camps. First, the cautiously optimistic. Of course not. Um, I wouldn't be here if it's too late. I think that there has been uh, so much highly relevant research on the, the social impacts of uh, nature-based solutions, uh, which are actually really critical if we are going to tackle climate change. We're not quite too late, but we haven't got much time left. And we've really got to do things now. But the basic carbon capture storage, we can do, we've got them now, we can build them now. We should be building them now. No, the short answer is no. We still have a chance to keep temperatures below certainly 2 degrees and even 1.5 degrees. Uh, one of my colleagues, Kevin Anderson at the University of Manchester, he said there's 95% chance of going to hell in a handcart and 5% chance of, of making that 1.5 degree target. But that 1.5 degree target, if we were able to make that, what that means for livelihoods, for quality of life, for health globally is profound and is something that we should strive for um, to the last possible moment. And the less optimistic. There were those who thought it was already too late. That's very clear. It has come too late. We know that. The IPCC has just issued a report saying that climate change is happening. We were supposed to prevent it from happening 30 years ago. We didn't. So it's definitely too late. What we can do now is prevent even worse impacts in the longer term, but we cannot prevent worse impacts in the short term. Yes, it's becoming too late. Because looking at the IPCC system assessment report, Africa is warming faster than any other part of the globe. But unfortunately, the developed nations who cause this warming are moving so slowly. To give us a sense of why scientists are so split on this question, we tracked down a researcher who's been studying and attending climate negotiations since the very first COP. I'm Niklas Höhne. I work at New Climate Institute and the Wageningen University. I work on climate policy and it's basically the interface between science and policy making. We provide a lot of research and insights on what it all means that countries and other actors are doing on climate, whether it's enough or not, whether with all the actions that are out there, we will keep temperature rise at low levels or not. So it is late, it is very late, but I don't think it's too late because we may be surprised by things that happen faster than we can imagine. And when we've been posing this is it too late question to scientists around the conference, they seem to have fallen into two camps. There are those that are cautiously optimistic and those that feel that it's already too late and we need to now deal with the consequences. Why do you think this divide may have occurred? I think it's not a straightforward answer to, to say whether it's too late or not. It's never too late, you can do certain things Maybe there's a certain uh, technological change that's coming or uh, you clean up the mess afterwards by taking CO2 out of the atmosphere again. That's why it's, uh, it's, there's not a clear scientific answer whether it's too late or not. And you're also part of the Climate Action Tracker, which tracks governments' commitments to climate change, how well they're making due on their promises. How well are nations doing to meet their climate commitments? Our nations are not doing uh, well. The imagination is right, but the countries are not setting the right short-term targets, are not implementing the right short-term measures. And there we still have a huge gap. If countries do everything that they have proposed here, we would still emit twice as much greenhouse gas emissions in 2030 than we should if we wanted to be on a trajectory towards 1.5 degrees. And the Climate Action Tracker has put out a new press release and a new analysis on Tuesday, just gone. What has this shown about how things are progressing? Well, the intention of the conference is to show that countries are on the same path. They want to do things. And that's why in the first week, there were many announcements. Many countries said, we do this, we do that. But after that first week, we went back and did a sobering assessment whether all of this is new, whether it's really driving emissions down. And we find that, yes, 
it is good that we have it, but unfortunately we have not solved the problem yet. If you assume that all countries implement their long-term uh, pledges, their net zero targets, we would calculate that the temperature increase by the end of the century would be 1.8 degrees roundabout. However, this is only because of the long-term targets, which we think are not yet uh, really credible because countries are not implementing short-term policies. If you take into account only the short-term targets that countries have made until 2030, then we calculate a temperature increase of 2.4 degrees by the end of the century. And if you take the actions that countries have really been doing, not what they're promising, what they've really been doing, then we calculate temperature increase of 2.7 degrees by the end of the century, and that definitely would be catastrophic climate change. So you've been at these negotiations, at various kind of negotiations for a long time. Do you think COP26 has moved the needle at all? COP26 has moved the needle. Uh, we calculate that it has uh, decreased the gap by roughly 20%, 20 to 25%. And that means to me we have to speed up. Doing these kinds of conferences every five years is not enough. You have to have that kind of a pressure moment each year that countries come forward with more until that gap is really closed.